Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and this lesson is about polygons. We're going to talk a little bit about what a polygon is. We'll show some pictures of symmetrical polygons, some common polygons, and then we'll talk about similar versus congruent polygons. So we've got a lot to cover. Let's get started. A polygon is a shape that has straight sides or straight edges. Polygons are closed figures. In other words, they are they have no open edges and polygon sides don't cross. Now, it might be tough to picture what this means, so we're going to play a little game that'll help us to recognize polygons. We'll call it polygon or not. So we're going to look at these five figures that we have on the board and identify them as polygon or not to help us recognize the properties of a polygon. Let's start off with the white oval. The white oval in the upper left hand corner has curved edges. Polygons have straight edges so it is not a polygon. Now let's move down to the curved edge on the bottom left corner. There are two reasons why this is not a polygon. The first is that it's not a, it doesn't have straight edges just like the oval. But the other reason is that you notice it is not a closed figure. It has an opening there, a gap. Um, the gates open or whatever you want to say. So because it has an open an opening in the figure and it has curved edges, it's not a polygon for two reasons. Um, the third um, shape on this board that is not a polygon is the dark blue figure in the lower central part there. This is not a polygon because the sides cross. If it was two separate triangles, they would each be polygons, but as a single figure, this is not a polygon. You can't have those crossing sides like you see there. So we're left with two figures, a triangle, purple triangle in the middle. That one is a polygon. And the gray rectangle is also a polygon. Both have straight edges, no openings, and no crossing edges. Um, and that's what I meant by crossing edges, like you saw in the dark blue image um, there. Hourglass looking shape. So now that we understand what a polygon is, let's talk about um, symmetrical polygons. Symmetrical polygons are polygons that have lines of symmetry. An example is our trapezoid. You could draw a line of symmetry down the middle here, this vertical line. That would be a line of symmetry, so we would call this a symmetrical polygon. There are lots of other polygons that have lines of symmetry. Um, here's an example. Um, this is a polygon, all straight sides, all closed edges. It's a funny looking polygon, but it's a polygon. And it has actually two lines of symmetry, um, two ways you could fold this polygon in half and you would still have equal on both sides. So there are two lines of symmetry there. And then we have our isosceles triangle here, um, and the line of symmetry would be straight down um, the middle of that. So those are three examples of polygons that have lines of symmetry, so we call them symmetrical polygons. Lots of polygons have lines of symmetry, but not all polygons will, and that's okay. This is just one type of polygon. So speaking of polygons, we're going to look at two common types of polygons. Um, one group is called the quadrilateral, or four-sided figure. Um, Inside of the category of quadrilateral or four-sided polygon, we've got a rectangle. It's a very common um, four-sided polygon. It has four sides and each angle is 90 degrees. That's a rectangle. That's some of the definition part of, of what makes a rectangle. The angle measurements need to be 90 degrees and it has to have four sides. Our second polygon that is also a four-sided figure or a quadrilateral is a square. This one here is four sides. Each angle is 90 degrees, but the difference is that the side lengths are the same. That's what makes a square a little bit different than a rectangle. And sometimes we could say a square is a special type of rectangle because it does have those 90 degree angles. It does have four sides, but 
it's a special type where all the side lengths are the same. So those are two common polygons. Now let's talk a little bit about triangles. Triangles are fun because we can categorize them in lots of different ways. These three triangles, we are going to categorize them by the angle measurements. So the, the dark blue triangle is called a right triangle. Think about why that might be called a right triangle. Look at the angle measurements. Maybe you notice that one of the angles is a 90 degree angle. It's a, a right angle, so that makes this a right triangle. Our red triangle up top is called an obtuse triangle because one of the angles is obtuse. You can see the, the angle measurement here that's larger than 90 degrees. That is an obtuse angle, therefore this is called an obtuse triangle. You can only have one obtuse angle inside of a triangle. And an acute triangle is a triangle where, where all the angle measurements are acute. Every single angle measurement is less than 90 degrees. So those are the three types of triangles that you can classify based on their angle measurements. The right triangle, obtuse triangle, and acute triangle. There's one other way to classify triangles that we're going to talk about today and that's based on their side lengths. All right. This first triangle, the green one here, all three side lengths are different. So we call that a scalene triangle. A scalene triangle has all side lengths different. An equilateral triangle has three side lengths that are the same. Sorry, I cut the top off of that triangle. Um, three side lengths and all three sides are the same. And that's what we call a, an equilateral triangle. And an isosceles triangle, the hardest one to spell, um, is one that has two side lengths that are the same. And you can see that in the purple one. Obviously, the, the bottom of the triangle is much shorter than the two sides that are you know, going up here on the sides. Um, but these two side lengths are congruent. They're, they're equal to each other. So therefore, they have the same length or they're congruent. And I use that word congruent on purpose because now we're going to talk about similar versus congruent. Congruent polygons have the same side lengths and the same angle measurements. In other words, the sides are congruent and the angles are congruent if we're using that vocabulary. So this figure here, this polygon, is congruent to this polygon. I twisted it a little bit. It's okay for them to turn. They can they can uh, move and turn and they can reflect as long as the angle measurements remain congruent and the side lengths remain congruent, we would say they're congruent. And that's the symbol for congruent. It's like an equal sign with the mustache. Um, it's got kind of that wavy line on top of it. That means that they're congruent. Similar polygons have different side lengths, but the same angle measurements. So the angles are congruent, but the side lengths are, are different. So in other words, you'll take a, a figure like this, a rhombus, and maybe shrink it down to being smaller. We would say that these two figures are similar. Their angle measurements are going to be the same. Um, it's kind of like they're proportionally smaller. You can see the, the difference there. They're not the same side lengths, but they are the same angle measurements. These, sim these polygons are similar. All right, so that similar versus congruent, that's an important piece of vocabulary that will be used a lot when talking about polygons. Quick recap, we talked about polygons, defined what a polygon is and what a polygon is not. We talked about symmetrical polygons, a couple of common polygons, the rectangles and the triangles and the squares. And then we talked about the difference between similar and congruent polygons. Hope that lesson was helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.